There were a handful of things that, whenever I learned about them in seminary, they really had a profound effect on me and, I could say, really changed my life. One of those things was that we are all made and we all desire one thing. We all desire to be happy. And we can look at our lives and we can say that everything that we do is to try to obtain that happiness. Even our sins is a yearning for, a grasping for happiness in the wrong way, but a grasping for happiness nonetheless. And so we know as Catholics, as Christians, that the one thing that can fulfill our happiness, that can make us happy, is God himself. This is why we call heaven the beatific vision, right? the blessed or the happy vision. And when we see God face to face, that's when our happiness will be fulfilled. But I learned something this week about happiness. I learned that I had been lied to about happiness. And you have probably been lied to about happiness also. Because I learned this week that one of the things that I've heard my whole life can't make you happy, actually can. We probably all have been told that money cannot make us happy. That's a lie. Money can make us happy if we use it in the right way. There was a professor from Harvard that did a study. He went out into a city and he had some envelopes with $5 bills and $20 bills in them. And to half of the people that he stopped, he gave one of these envelopes with either 5 or $20 and he said, you have to spend this money by the end of the day on yourself. And to the other half, he said, you have to spend this money by the end of the day on someone else. And they actually got these people's cell phone numbers and they called them at the end of the day and they could see that the people who spent money on themselves had no noticeable difference up or down in their level of happiness. But that the people that received the money and spent it on someone else, they had noticeably increased their happiness. And so money can make us happy if we give it away, if we spend it on others. And this has certainly been my experience. I have a personal, I have several personal experiences with this, but one in particular. Uh, whenever I was a first year priest, I was at Our Lady of Wisdom on the UL campus. And one of the things we do every year over there is have a big fundraiser called the Boylan Bash. And part of this night is a live auction. And they had some amazing uh, items on the auction. And if you've ever been at an auction, it's very exciting. Right? It's very easy to get caught up in the moment when you're at an auction. And so I saw people bidding on this one particular item and I said, and this is kind of fun, I want to get in on it. I said, if they see a priest bid on this, they're just going to go crazy and people are going to start bidding left and right. And so I raised my hand and they saw me and they called me out. And then you know what happened? Turns out nobody wants to outbid a priest. Should have jumped in much earlier. And it was worth all of the money I had to pay. If I could have gotten a picture of this, it would have been great. To see the look on one of my friend's face. So my friend worked for Wisdom too, and it was her job that night to walk around and get people to sign the paper after they bid to say, I'm going to actually pay for this. And the look on her face was priceless. She was like scared to bring it to me. It was great. And I didn't mind it. Because I knew where the money was going, right? I knew it was going to a cause that I was passionate about, a cause that I believed in, and so I was okay with dishing it out. And it really became one of the best moments of my life. And the thing that I bid on was a Taylor Swift concert. I had to go listen to her music before I went to know what I was going to. But it was it turned out to be a great event. It was in a suite at Tiger Stadium, so it wasn't all bad. Now, why do I talk about money? 
because this weekend is education weekend for the bishop's services appeal. And usually uh, people will show videos or play audio, which I never find are very easy to hear or see in a church. So I'm not going to do that. Another reason I'm not going to do it is because uh, my first pastor said, the bishop gives you once a year a free chance to talk about money. Don't play the video. Take the opportunity. So that's what I'm doing. And I've been doing a lot of reading and listening to things on money for my personal finances, for finances of the parish. And I wanted to share two things with you that I've sort of learned as I have listened to these various things, mostly, mostly podcasts. One of them is called Always Hope. And it's a, an interview with the Director for Stewardship in the Archdiocese of New Orleans. And one of the things he said was that when priests talk about money, they generally don't do it very well. And he said one re- way that they go wrong is they talk about giving to a need. Right? So Father will get up and say, Hey, you know how you like being comfortable in church? Well, our air conditioner just broke and we need X amount of dollars, so I need you to give. So he said, don't do that, because once the need is gone, then you're basically giving people permission that they don't need to give anymore. So don't talk about giving to a need. So I'm not going to talk about how we need to change the lights and rent a lift to do it. I'm not going to talk about how we need to paint the ceiling because it's about to fall down over there. I'm not going to talk about how we need to paint outside so the wood doesn't rot and the building fall down or fix the windows or the things we have to do at Lewisburg. I'm not going to mention any of those. Instead, I'm going to talk about what he said, the way we should approach it. And the way we should approach it is that we need to talk about the need that we have as human beings to give. So not giving to a need, but the need to give. Now, why do we have a need to give? It's written in who we are as human beings. We are created, the very beginning of the Bible tells us, in the image and likeness of God. And God is a trinity of persons. Three divine persons and one God. And it's a communion of self-giving. We say that God the Father gives Himself, loves the Son, and the Son in turn gives His love to the Father, And that that love is so strong, so real, that it is a whole other person of the Blessed Trinity, the Holy Spirit, which is the gift, right? The giver of life. And so this inner communion of God is one based on giving. And if we're made in His image and likeness, then there is something in us that desires to give. And again, I see this in my own life, uh, particularly on my day off. When I have a day off that I'm just like in a bad mood and I'm like, no, I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to do anything for anyone. I'm going to stay in my room and watch a Harry Potter movie and just indulge in food. I'm just, it's going to be a me day. Those are the worst days off that I have. I go to bed feeling like a failure because I didn't give of myself. Now, my day off shouldn't be like every other day. I need to rest. But I need to give of myself in some way. And so I look for ways to do that. And so another thing that they mentioned in that podcast is that we tend to think that people who are joyful, they're joyful first, then they give. They said it's actually the other way around. That people who are generous, who give, become more joyful. Which makes sense if we are made to give, because when we give, we are becoming more of who we're called to be. And when we live the way we are created, we are more joyful. When we do what we're supposed to do, we are happy. And I I do promise you, I'm not going to give you a Latin word study every week. But it just has been working out so well the last few. So I looked up the word generous, right? What is the etymology of the word generous? And it actually comes from the Latin word genus, which if you tried to forget your biology classes, right, that's how we classify things, genus and species. What do they belong to, right? It means the race or the stock. 
It tells us what something is. And so we, right, our genus comes from that, that word generous, generosity, that we are created to give. Yes, we're created uh, to give. It doesn't just mean money, right? How, are we, how can we give ourselves to people in need? How can we give our time to those who are in need? And now with any talk about giving, there probably is some talk about how much we should give. Right? And people might get nervous thinking that I'm going to tell you that you're a horrible sinner if you don't give 10%. I'm not going to say that. Right? 10% is a good thing to shoot for. It's biblical. Right? In the Old Testament, it says to give a tenth of what you gather in your fields and everything you have to the Lord. So that's what we should aim for. But I think we can get, uh, t- keep two things in mind as we determine what it is, the amount that we're going to give. The first thing is that it should be a priority. Right? It shouldn't just be uh, whatever I have left over at the end of doing all the things I need and want. If I have something left, I'll give. Right? Well, we need to make it a priority. And the other thing I've been listening to lately is Dave Ramsey. Right? And so Dave Ramsey is in the business of helping people to make and use their money well. And this guy who is trying to help people increase their wealth tells them that they need to prioritize their giving. And I actually downloaded a little app that he recommends called the Every Dollar app so I could do my own budget. And the first line item of expenses is church. And the second one is other charities. Right, that we need to make our giving a priority. Because if we do this, it means that we're looking at our budget and we're, we're dealing with our money well. Right? And so we're going to use it better. And the second thing that we need to keep in mind as we're determining what we are going to give is that we need to plan what we are going to give. And this has been one of the great things about being here in Church Point. There are many, many great things about being here in Church Point. This is one of them. That when I got here, we didn't have a way to give money online. Partly because we don't have a website yet. We're getting to that. And so because there's not a way to give online, I couldn't just um, get on and put in my little monthly gift and then forget about it. Right? I have to sit down. I have my little envelopes in my desk drawer in my office. And every week... I pull them out, and I sit down, and I write my checks. And doing that helps me because I can think about what happened that past week. Did I have some income that I wasn't expecting? Did someone give me a gift, or did I do something for someone? And if that's the case, then I'll give a little more. If I had some expense, or if I had some uh, other charity that I wanted to give to, maybe I'll give a little less. Always have something I'm not going to go below. But maybe I give a little less that week. And so this helps me to think about it, to plan what I'm going to give. It helps me to be more generous. And one reason why I feel like I have to be generous is because I'm telling you to do it. I can't ask you to do something I'm not willing to do. The second reason why I feel like I have to be generous is because God has been generous and you have been generous to me. Right? You remember that we did the capital campaign for the diocese uh, just a couple of years ago. And part of that was for priest retirement. And so because of your generosity, the diocese, with that money they raised for the priest retirement, purchased long-term care policies for each of us priests. It was very generous. And I felt a little scandalized. And I told this to my spiritual director. I said, you know, we don't make a whole lot of money, but I don't have a lot of bills either. And so I worry that not having this expense, because I was going to buy my own policy, I worry that not having this expense could leave me money to live a life that I shouldn't be living. Right? To buy a little nicer car, or to take a little nicer trip, or to go to little nicer restaurants a little more often. And so his response to me was, well, you need to give more. I said, you're right. 
And so I increase my giving. And so we have to be generous with what we have received. Now, next week is going to be the pledge weekend for the Bishop's Services Appeal. There are uh, promotional and educational materials in your pew that you can take with you, but next week will be the the, uh, giving portion or the uh, commitment weekend. And I just want to talk about one thing that the Bishop's Services Appeal covers because I've yapped at you longer than I normally do and I know you don't want to hear much more. So one thing that the Bishop's Services Appeal does is... It educates priests. So we are very fortunate in this parish to have not one but two priests. We're very fortunate to have two young men studying for the seminary. We're very fortunate, even if it is Miles, to have a seminarian here for the year, right, helping us in the parish and teaching little classes, teaching at the school. All of that costs money, and it costs a lot of money. So the minimum amount of time in seminary is six years. And it cost on average about $250,000 to educate one priest. It's a lot of money. It's the single largest thing that the diocese spends money on every single year. The bill for our seminarians is over a million dollars because we have so many. It's a good thing. And the money that's raised from the Bishop Service Appeal goes to support them in that, so that they can discern freely and concentrate on becoming good holy priests and not concentrate on having to pay for their school. So our goal as a parish is $25,000 over the course of the next year. I know that we can do that. And anything that we collect over $25,000, half of it comes right back to us to use on those needs that I wasn't going to talk about, right? And so I encourage you to be generous, right? To take time this week and think about and pray about what you are going to give to the Bishop's Services Appeal. I made my gift so that I could stand up here confidently and tell you to give, right? But to pray about it and help in this way to continue, like the Gospel says, to be a light for the world, right? To spread the joy that we receive from God, and to give light to those who are in darkness.